with Mr. Taylor part one. This I'm going to divide into two different parts because it's kind of a long video. So let's get started. Elements of literature. These are the elements of a story, the different parts of every story. First, we're going to start off with setting. In our setting, we're going to need to answer three questions. Where? when and what background information for where the story takes place that's going to be your location that could take place in a local mall in your own home out in outer space or even uh, in a castle maybe if you're talking about a fairy tale setting when the story takes place a couple of important things to note that will be like is this in the modern times is this a long time ago in the time of dragons and princesses or is this in the future maybe if we're talking about an outer space uh, setting you also want to pay attention to what time of year a story takes place. That could give you important details. And the setting, as far as the time of year that something takes place, can tell you a lot about the story beyond that, oh, this just takes place in the winter. That might represent something more than what it is. We call that symbolism. We'll talk about that more later. And finally, with when, we'll talk about what time of day, because just like the season, that can also be important and give you some more details about a story. Background information. This could be anything else that will be helpful to know that we get out of our setting. So this might tell you, oh, this is taking place during the Civil Rights Movement, which could mean a lot for the different types of characters that you have. Or maybe this is taking place in a setting where magic is commonplace, where people are just used to seeing magic in an everyday setting. That will make a huge difference in a story, whether or not that's the case. Next, we'll talk about point of view. This is all about the narrator. Point of view is all about the narrator. First, we'll talk about what person it's in. Then we'll talk about the knowledge level of our narrator. And then finally, we'll talk about trustworthy versus unreliable narrators. As far as person, right now, I'm talking about myself in the first person. That means I'm going to use pronouns like I and me. The narrator, because they're talking about themselves, is going to play a part in the story, usually to be the main character, but they're going to be inside the story as one of the characters. Next, we'll talk about second person. In second person, you'll use words like you and your. That means you, as the reader, are actually going to be a character within the story. This one is the least common, but usually you'll see this in like a choose-your-own-adventure novel. You are walking down the street. You see a scary house on the left. Do you want to keep walking or do you want to go inside? And then it'll tell you what page to turn to. That would be second person. Next, we're going to talk about third person. This would be when you use words like he, she, and they. If you've heard of referring to yourself in the third person, that's when you start using your name and you don't say I, me. So as Mr. Taylor, I could say Mr. Taylor walked across the room. Mr. Taylor picked up his Diet Coke. Mr. Taylor took a great big gulp. It would be really awkward if you saw me talking about myself in the third person because that's usually referring to how the narrator and the reader are both on the outside of the story and the characters within the story are the ones that we're focusing on and we're talking about them like they're other people because they are. Then for our knowledge level, we have three choices. We have objective, we have limited, and we have omniscient. An objective narrator doesn't know the thoughts, feelings, fears, or goals of any character. He treats those characters like they are objects, which is why object is part of objective. And it would be like me talking about my lamp on my desk because it is um, something that I can describe as far as what it does, but I can't tell you what it's thinking or how it feels about life. I can only report what it does. The lamp is on, the lamp is off, the lamp falls off my desk and crashes on the floor. I can talk about it, but only as if it's an object. And uh, an objective narrator will treat all of the characters just like they're objects and will only tell you what they're doing. Then we have limited. This would be when the narrator shows the thoughts, feelings, fears, and goals for only one character, sometimes a few characters, but very few. They're limited to only knowing about those certain characters. And, for example, sometimes you're going to follow one major character through the story, and we will know what they're thinking and how they're feeling, but only that character. We won't know about everybody else. Which brings us to our next one, omniscient. Omni here means all, and then the science here uh, means knowing. And we know that from the word science that we use a lot. So omniscient, we can say, means all knowing. This is when a narrator can show the thoughts, feelings, fears, and goals of all characters. And remember, omni means all. That'll be your big clue here. Our last question that we're going to answer about our narrator, is our narrator trustworthy? Or is he unreliable? If we have a trustworthy narrator, which is the most common kind of narrator, then we know that we can trust that narrator not to lie to us about the story or leave anything out. Typically, we're just going to go ahead and trust our narrator. Sometimes, though, we will have an unreliable narrator. 
It's not very common, but sometimes that narrator leaves out important information or they lie to us or sometimes they're hallucinating or they're a little bit insane and we can't trust that what they're saying to us as they tell the story is what's actually going on in that story. It's not very common, but be on the lookout for it because sometimes that does come up. And then we're going to talk about mood and tone. Now, these are the two that are the easiest to confuse with each other. So think of a person giving a speech. The tone that they use in their voice will show how they feel about something. The mood is going to be the atmosphere in the room. If the tone is very angry, then sometimes the mood can be fearful because they're afraid of whoever is talking and yelling at them because that person is so mad. So think about it this way. Their tone is the way that they speak. So tone is the way that a narrator seems to feel about the story. And then the audience in the room feels a mood. The mood is the way that a typical reader would feel about the story. So they're both about feelings. That's why they're so closely related. But the mood is all about the reader. The tone is all about the narrator. And then the last one for this video theme, I want you to say it like this. The theme is the universal message. The theme is the universal message. All stories are part of the bigger story of life. That's why we connect with stories. That's why we have favorite stories from our childhood, favorite movies that we really, really like. Typically, something about that story is going to speak to our lives. That's why we like telling stories. Stories is a big part of who we are. Stories are a big part of who we are. Sorry. Um, and the theme is that connection there between what's happening in the story and what's happening in our lives. And a couple of different ways that you could start out um, your theme statement to say what this story says about life could be in life, sometimes people, or in life, sometimes, dot, dot, dot. So in life, people sometimes will be more generous than you'd ever expect. So in life, sometimes things don't always go as you plan. These are the statements that it tells us about life. Now, sometimes the theme can be a lesson that you learn, and we have a word for that. We call that the moral. But do not say, when I ask you, hey, what's the theme? That it's the lesson or that it's the moral of the story because it is not always a moral. But sometimes it is. Just know that. All right. That has been part one of our two-part series on the elements of literature. So check back for the second part and have a great day.